Hello everyone and welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing manic disorders. Now, if you guys don't already know, on our YouTube channel, we have a playlist for the psychiatry uh, portion of the USMLE Step 1. So go ahead and check it out there. You can learn all the information you need to when it comes to psych for the uh, Step 1 boards exam. And also, when you get there, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel if you guys like what we're doing. And with that, let's begin our discussion about manic disorders. So for the USMLE Step 1, there are four main types of manic disorders that you should know about. And these are, the first one is going to be a manic episode by itself. The second one is a hypomanic episode. Number three is bipolar disorder, aka manic depression. And the last one is going to be a cyclothymic disorder. So all of these are very important. All of these get tested uh, to some extent, uh, usually, so you should definitely know all, uh, all four of these uh, um, in depth. So let's start talking about the very first uh, manic disorder called a manic episode. So a manic episode is simply an episode of mania that lasts greater than one week, right? It would be something like the someone who becomes kind of manic who has to do a lot of things. So what is mania exactly? Well, someone who's suffering from mania is going to have a very expansive or irritable mood and they're going to see an abnormally uh, abnormally large or an, an abnormal increased activity and energy level. That's not normal. They feel like they can do everything all at once at every single time. They talk fast and usually they have a decreased need for sleep because they don't feel tired. Again, that's not also not normal. One uh, other thing is that they have psychomotor agitation. They have to be doing something at all times and their mind is usually racing. So this is caused uh, usually by some chemical imbalance and what ends up happening is that it causes a marked functional impairment and it can lead to hospitalizations. And that's important because a manic episode usually causes some sort of uh, impairment. Now, it may be that the patient ends up spending a lot of their money. It may be that the patient ends up not going to their work and uh, they're at risk of being fired, something like that. In this case, a lot of times patients or people think that people who are having a manic episode are doing a lot of work because they have a lot of energy. They don't need to sleep, so they're very, very productive, but that's actually not the case. Patients who suffer from manic episodes are usually unproductive, uh, and they have something called disinhibition and irresponsibility. So a lot of times in the USMLE Step 1 vignettes, you'll see that they've written that a patient ends up spending $50,000 on, uh, let's say, radio equipment because they're going to talk to aliens. Obviously, that makes no sense. And in that statement itself, I also mentioned one more key defining feature of uh, having a manic episode, and that's grandiosity. Patients obviously think that things are bigger than they are. They feel like, uh, and that's in the situation I just pre presented, that they'll be able to do, communicate with aliens from uh, a different solar system. Obviously, that's not going to happen. They're wasting their time. They're wasting their resources. They're wasting their income. And they have some sort of grandiose belief uh, that's happening. So these three are very important. They're something you should definitely understand that happens in a manic episode. Now, when it comes to manic episodes, diagnosis is very important because that lets you know exactly what's happening. We've talked about this before. In psychiatry, you definitely need to know the diagnostic criteria for uh, all the diseases, and it's the same for a manic episode. So diagnosis requires hospitalization or three of the following. Okay, this is the main thing. Then you need to hospitalize someone for mania or you have to have three of the following. They have to have distractibility, impulsivity, impulsivity, grandiosity, a flight of ideas, which just means they have continuous amounts of ideas coming to them no matter what. They have to feel agitated like they have to do something. Usually they're sleep deprived and usually they talk really fast. And together, as you can see, uh, we have made the first letters of each of these uh, red, they make the memory tool and it's pretty much uh, straightforward. It says dig fast during a manic episode. And dig fast is what obviously the, um, the first letter spell. So that's how I remembered it. And I think it's in many uh, books as well. Or you can think of someone who's manic likes to really dig fast. Uh, that is perfect. So if they have three of these following 
uh, um, uh, symptoms if they feel distracted they have a flight of ideas and they're sleep deprived they're honestly uh, right off the bat having a manic episode so long as this lasts greater than what time guys one week that's the key okay they has to be greater than one week that's the timeline timeline matters in psychiatry you guys know this by now uh, timeline matters so it, it has to last greater than one week all right so that is a manic episode. The next thing we're going to talk about is a hypomanic episode. So a hypomanic episode is very similar to a manic episode as you probably guessed it. But the only difference is, is that the mood disturbances have little to no impairment with their function. That's the main thing. That's why we have this part, the hypomanic part. Okay, so it's kind of a milder form of main of a manic episode so let's write this out mild form of manic episode to help you guys remember that's how i always remembered it it let me put things together so in a hypomanic episode they're not going to have that much impairment they're going to be able to function normally they're still going to have those manic features like being able to stay awake all night or having a lot of energy and excitement and activity level is you know being really high that's still going to happen without them really impairing their ability to go to work etc cetera, etc cetera. now what ends up happening is that patients end up having an inflated self-esteem but they won't have the grandiosity or the psychotic symptoms that usually does not happen and um, these patients, unlike manic patients, are very organized and they are more productive simply because they have more energy. We just talked about that earlier, but because they're, they don't have impairment, they're going to be organized, they're going to be productive, and they don't take as much risks, right? They're not as irresponsible. They're usually, uh, they understand what they're doing and the consequences of their actions very well. And this usually lasts around four days and resolves over weeks. So, that's what a hypomanic episode is. It's pretty straightforward. I, I, in, my, uh, in my mind, I think of hypomania as exactly what the word means, a milder form of mania. So that's what a hypomanic episode is. So now let's move over to bipolar disorder, a.k.a. manic depression. Bipolar disorder is pretty common, and it's something you definitely need to know. In bipolar dep uh, disorder or manic depression, patients are going to have symptoms of both mania and and depression that's important so this is mania like we talked about so manic episodes and depression so we've already talked about major depressive disorder and other depression disorders uh, so go ahead and check those videos out they're in the psychiatry playlist but in this case bipolar disorder has mania and depression now the mania itself can present with hypomania or mania and the depression doesn't mean it's always constantly there like it is in MDD. It's more of a depression with atypical features, but it can present from time to time. And in, in bipolar disorder, the symptoms of mania and hypomania and depression are going to fluctuate rapidly. That's the main key point of uh, bipolar disorder. So keep in mind, mania is on one end of the spectrum, right? So this is someone who's very active, who's very, very uh, uh, irresponsible, who's going to be someone who likes to, you know, have a lot of energy level. And then in the middle, you ha uh, on the other side, you have depression, where a patient uh, who's suffering from depression isn't really that that active they are uh, kind of slowed down they have a flat affect just slow talking ability in general and then in between this spectrum is where a patient usually lies so in bipolar disorder they're going to go from depression to mania to depression again to mania and then in the middle keep in mind we also have hypomania right it's like kind of in the middle of this so they'll go to hypomania, et cetera, et cetera. So they're bouncing back and forth. That's what ends up happening. And uh, the perfect example of someone who has bipolar disorder is our man right here, Kanye West, uh, Yeezy. And he, he talked about it in his previous album. Uh, it literally says, uh, I think the, the, the title of it says, I have bipolar, it's, uh, it's great, or something like that. I hate having bipolar, it's great. Or I hate being bipolar, it's great. That's what it says on his album, boom. Just remember it off the top of my head. So like we said, in these patients, they're going to be fluctuating constantly from mania to hypomania to depression, back to hypomania to mania, etc., etc., etc. So usually bipolar disorder is classified 
into two subparts, right? And those are bipolar one and bipolar two. Now you need to know this for a clinical uh, uh, understanding of what happens. In bipolar one, you're gonna have someone who has a manic a manic episode with uh, or without depression or hypomania. So if some person has a manic episode, not hypomania or depression, but a manic episode, like we were saying, with the dig fast acronym, you know, being present, uh, any three of those, that's going to be classified right off the bat as bipolar one. They don't need to have depression. They don't need to be hypomanic. But if they have a manic episode, they are bipolar one right off the bat. Now, if they have uh, bipolar two, that just means they either have hypomania and depression without manic episodes. Okay, so manic episode by default, you're going to be bipolar one. If you don't have a manic episode, but you have symptoms of hypomania and depression, you're going to be bipolar two right off the bat. So that is um, uh, how you classify bipolar disorder. When it comes to these patients, they're at a high risk of going uh, of, of committing suicide simply because not only do they have depression and that puts them at a higher risk, but also they're fluctuating back and forth all the time. So for these patients, you want to make sure that you are screening them for suicide, and that's very important. And they often have hallucinations and delusions as well. So when it comes to treating them, the first line treatment for bipolar disorder is lithium. That's very high yield. Don't ever forget it. Lithium is still used to treat bipolar disorder. You can also use mood stabilizers like valproic acid, carbamazepine, but that is uh, not usually the first line. First line is going to be lithium no matter what. Do not give them antidepressants. It's going to cause mania. It's going to make it worse because antidepressants usually leave more serotonin or norepinephrine in the synaptic, synaptic clefts, and that's going to exacerbate the symptoms of mania, making them feel like they want to do stuff because that's what norepinephrine does. It's an upper. So that's pretty much what bipolar disorder or manic depression is, and uh, it's a general under, it's a general overview. So make sure you understand this very well. Now, finally, we have something called the cyclothymic disorder. In my opinion, this is a mild form of a bipolar disorder where patients will have mild mania and mild depression, but it, you, they do not meet the criteria for either hypomania or MDD. That's important, okay? They don't meet any criteria. They last for about greater than or equal to two years, and they fluctuate between mild depressive and hypomanic symptoms. Now, this usually occurs at least half of the time. Uh, the fluctuation it occurs half the, half the time, but it's never absent for more than two months. That's the key thing. They're not going to meet the criteria for hypomania and MDD. They're going to have a very mild bipolar disorder, but it's never going to go away. It's usually there for at least uh, uh, the fluctuations occur for at least half the time that they're suffering from it. And it never goes away for more than two months. That's a cyclothymic disorder. So let's just review everything because this was a pretty uh, a dense video today. In, in review, if a patient is acting manic, like if they're irresponsible, unproductive, they're having grandiose uh, delusions, they're going to be seeing a manic episode, and by default, they're going to be bipolar 1. All right, that's a bipolar disorder classification. If a patient is mildly manic, if they're responsible, you know, if they're responsible, but they're so productive and have grandiose uh, delusions, it's a hypomanic disorder. And if they present with depression, hold up. Let's undo this. If they present with depression, it is bipolar 2. And if a present if a patient is manic and depressed, they're going to be bipolar disorder like we discussed. Uh, and if it's mildly manic and depressed, you're going to have the cyclothymic disorder. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel if you guys like what we are doing. And if you guys are interested, you can find our lectures now on a podcast format on all your streaming services for podcasts. So Apple Music right here, Spotify, Google Podcasts right there. Whatever you listen to podcasts, go ahead and check us out. You can search Mad Medicine and find all of these episodes online. So go ahead and check it out and go ahead and continue on to the next video. Thank you so much for watching.